Today we are discussing peptides. Now, I've taken peptides a lot. I've got a lot of benefits out of peptides. If you're looking to up your skincare game, then it's time for peptides. Peptides have been a hot topic for YouTubers, podcasters, and other influencers. It seems like there's a peptide for pretty much anything. Peptides are one of the most interesting things that are out there right now in the world of recovery, in the world of muscle building, and even in the world of cognition. We are talking about peptides in skincare products for anti-aging. Weight loss, hormone production, quick healing from injuries, and even a tan in a bottle. So what are peptides? How are people getting them? And how safe are they? A peptide is a string of amino acids. And they're often called the building blocks of proteins. Peptides are produced naturally in the body, but synthetic peptides have been used in medicine for a long time. Insulin is a peptide. GLP-1 drugs like Ozempic and Zepbound, which are used for diabetes and weight loss, are synthetic peptides. They play a role in a bunch of bodily functions, including hormone regulation. So many of these peptides are very short-lived. They're degraded very quickly. Synthetic peptides are used as drugs by necessity are longer acting. So that is the main difference between naturally occurring hormones within the body that often have very short half-life and the synthetic peptides that are used to mimic the action of endogenous hormones but can be used as drugs by extending their half-life in the body. Insulin and GLP-1s like Ozempic are FDA approved medicines usually prescribed in traditional healthcare settings. But other peptides being promoted by influencers, less so. So how are people getting them? One route is through direct-to-consumer websites you may have heard of, like Hims and Hers, Roe, Eden. They sell GLP-1 products, and some offer other peptides like Sermoralin. Sermoralin. Which direct-to-consumer company Eden claims may support lean muscle growth by mimicking growth hormone releasing hormone. So in a lot of cases, the way that these sites are set up, they're, uh, they're consumerizing the process of healthcare in a way that it even looks a little bit like Amazon. Like you put a medication or a supplement into a shopping cart, you proceed to check out. And then before you can check out and actually pay for the medications, you do have to talk to a healthcare provider or at least message with them. But it's very much a like product first consumerized version of health, the healthcare experience as opposed to going to your doctor, talking about your healthcare conditions and your symptoms broadly, and then at the end, talking about what products you might want to consider to treat. But there are also countless websites selling research peptides. That is, synthetic peptides that are not intended for human use. These peptides are usually delivered as a powder. Here's a product note from one of these websites. All products are shipped in lyophilized or powder form, and must be reconstituted to a liquid for research and testing. We are unable to provide any dosing instructions. However, all products should be considered pharmaceutical grade. Randy Seeley is a professor and researcher at the University of Michigan, and he uses research grade peptides in his work. So we do quality control on every batch of stuff that we get from these kinds of vendors in a way that most people do not have available. And I can tell you, not every batch passes quality control, even for our use in cell culture and in mice. So um, I am very dubious of the idea that people can order these peptides, know that they got what it is that they intended to get, and to be able then to mix it up and make it for themselves and dose appropriately. But even if the peptide product is exactly what it says it is on the label, that doesn't mean there isn't any risk. And many of these compounds being sold over the internet have not been tested in clinical trials. So their safety is not assured, nor is it efficacy. So there may not be any benefit from taking that. In addition, there may be a safety risk. And in fact, some of the compounds have been abandoned by pharma company, and we know they were abandoned because of safety reasons, and people continue to use them. So why would anyone take a risk like this on untested, unproven peptides from the internet? Reasons surely vary from person to person, but some recent social trends might help explain. We've seen this secular shift towards a more muscular, idealized male body image. They use these compounds to look leaner and more muscular, not necessarily to improve their physical performance or athletic performance, but simply to look leaner and more muscular. The second uh, fad that we are seeing is 
this explosion of anti-aging medications mm. for rejuvenation, for looking younger, or for staying young longer, or to delay the aging process. And the third category is just using compounds based on Thorklok for conditions for which the modern medicine hasn't found a cure. So many people may have aches and pains or may just not feel good. And so they go, go over the internet, do a search, and use these unapproved compounds to feel better or to treat symptoms uh, for which we may not have an approved medication. You know, the cl chief clinical officer of one of these telehealth sites that does pre prescribe peptides um, has told me that a lot of the patients that she sees through the company are ones that don't trust the FDA. Um, you know, they look at what they saw as vaccine injury during the COVID pandemic. Um, and, you know, that's the reason why they don't trust FDA authorization, FDA approved drugs anymore. And to some extent are turning to alternative care providers and sometimes alternative treatments. Lots of people in the U.S. struggle with their health. Healthcare is expensive and navigating the system is frustrating and difficult. It's not hard to understand why people would be tempted to look for alternative treatments like peptides. But it's important for people to understand the motivations of some of the influencers discussing unregulated products. Individuals who have uh, either a large following online um, or are charismatic about how they deliver the information in a way that speaks to your already biased view of how what you think you should do, right, are likely to influence you in a great way. When you get down to the level of detail we're talking about here, right, in terms of taking lyophilized dry powder drug and mixing it up and relying on uh, JD7467 to tell you how you should do that, um, an individual you don't know who they are or why they're telling you this, I find right uh, deeply concerning. It just shows you the, the level of uh, desperation for some people. And just as I was uh, finishing up editing this video, uh, Hims and Hers had their Q1 earnings call. Um, on the call, their CEO, Andrew Dudum, indicated that he sees peptides as a key area of growth for the company uh, going forward. Uh, here's what he had to say. Um, peptide innovation is expanding very, very rapidly. This is something our team is is uh, really paying attention to, that I am paying attention to deeply. Uh, and this is across a lot of different areas. It's across pain management. Uh, it's across recovery. Uh, it's across generalized longevity. Stat will continue to cover direct-to-consumer healthcare platforms like Hims and Hers. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out statnews.com.